Hey guys, I wanted to do a video for you guys for summertime um, when you're trying to review your math facts. So this is probably for grades, I don't know, kindergarten through fourth grade, um, thereabouts. So we have started really, I have started really doing a lot of math games because my oldest son, uh, he is struggling learning his math facts. Like just simple, some of the addition, some of the subtraction, and now we're into mul multiplication. And I just was like, ah! what do I do? And so I went on Pinterest and asked friends and did all sorts of things and tried all sorts of ways um, just to make it fun and easy for him to remember and also um, fun ways to review and ways that I can pull my kindergartner because I have a third grader and a kindergartner, ways that I can do it together with them, play games with them both or they could play with each other. Um, so anyways, not all of these are like that, but I will start with my number one favorite and it's just a pack of cards and I'm sure you guys have probably heard of this we just I hold um, I have two packs of cards upstairs in my drawer just like in my junk drawer and what I like to do we play war and with my younger son who's in kindergarten I kind of have to actually make like two rows of cards and match them up so um, I know what I'm going to lay down and what he's going to lay down. So I kind of have to match those up for him because he doesn't know all of his addition and everything, of course, yet. Um, so anyways, you take out all the face cards. Oops, sorry. The sun is kind of shining in my window here. Uh, you take out all the face cards. So then you're just left with the number cards. And of course, the ace is your one. And I, with my older son, I just basically like divide the deck in half. So he has half. I have half. And then you hold him face down like this. And you just, you flip it over. You both flip it over at the same time. Add the numbers, subtract the numbers, whatever you're working on. And whoever can say I'm the fastest gets those two cards. Whoever, once you're done with the whole pile, whoever has the most cards wins, that kind of thing. Obviously, if they're struggling or they're younger, they, you have to give them some extra time. <laughs> Otherwise, this doesn't work very well because they're going to feel real defeated real fast and they're not gonna have hardly any cards except like one plus one or whatever. So anyways, yeah, you obviously have to work with that. But that is my number one favorite. It's my go-to, they love it the most. Um, it's just a really easy, fun way to do it and it, they like playing against me um, or against each other sometimes. So that is my number one favorite. Um, my second one is also a card game and you have to have two decks for this one. For war, you can just do one or you could just use one but this one I just learned um, from Pinterest so I'm gonna show it to you really fast okay so you set the cards up in a pyramid shape like this and it doesn't matter color or anything and essentially what you will do is you're trying to make ten so you draw five cards out of the draw pile sorry my desk is a total disaster um, you draw five cards out of the draw pile and then you hold those in your hand whoops I forgot to take the face cards out hello Take all the face cards out, FYI. Um, so you draw five cards. I'm just gonna grab a few here so you know what I'm talking about. Five cards. The rest you put in a drop pile over here, minus the face cards. And then what you'll do is you'll look at your whole hand of five cards and you're trying to make 10. So you actually do play with the tens and you grab those and you put them down here in another pile. And you keep going, so like, Three. Oh, I don't have that. Two. Okay. Eight and two make ten. So you get to put that in your pile. You keep going. A lot of times I will say because I see two nines up here. You know, I mean, maybe you'll get the nine in here, but I would I have let my son like use two of these from the deck. That's not the way you're supposed to play it, but if it gets like where he has three nines up there, I'm like, okay, well, you're stuck now. Um, you're not gonna get much farther. So I would let him do that. And then you just keep going and very rarely have we ever got all the cards, but whoever has the least amount of cards wins. So it's kind of fun, and um, my younger son likes it a lot, and he's kind of working on the Making 10, so that's the one I'm kind of working on with him. And so this has been a really fun game. So you set yours up like that. You have to have another deck of cards in your other 
the other person sets theirs up. You kind of face each other, make your pyramids, and you say go, and you just kind of go on your own and play and make tens and, and get your pile, and you play until you can't play anymore. So obviously if you have five cards in your hand and you cannot play anymore, you draw one out of the draw pile. If you can't play, you keep drawing out of the draw pile. So you might be holding all of the draw pile in your hand if you can't play or whatever. So that's when I would say, okay, you know what, take your eight and your two, play that. And that would, you know, maybe free up something else that didn't really in this case. Because you could only play off of the cards that are free. Like you cannot play on the six, you can't play on the three, four. You can only play on like a seven and four right now. So it's a really fun game. And it sounds kind of maybe complicated, but it's not. And my kindergartner got it right away. So I think it's a really fun, different kind of game. And you can still play it with cards, which are easy to find. Okay, so the other games that I really like are... Um, Okay, I'm going to show you this one next. So I do Confessions of a Homeschooler, and I really, really like her stuff. This is for my preschooler, and these are like, I don't even know what they're called, but they're basically just mats that I've laminated. I, just, I printed out the number, and you can use these in a million different ways. Seriously, a million different ways. So what we do is we spread them all out. It goes 1 through 10. We spread them all out over the living room or wherever, and what we end up doing is I yell out... Um, I'll say five minus two and, you know, or whatever you're working on, you can do multiplication. I, I change it up for each of my kids. Like my daughter, I just yell out the number and she has to find it and jump to it. My middle son, I'll call out multiplication or addition. And my oldest, I do multiplication or subtraction, depending on what we're working on that day. Really fun. They love it. It's something very active and gets them jumping around and they think it is awesome. So you could just draw numbers on paper throw them around the room, one through 10 or more. Totally depends on what you want to do. Um, okay, I picked these up at a garage sale and we did these a couple summers ago when my son was in second grade. I guess it was, was it last summer? I think it was when he was going into second grade. And these are called, and this is probably really old because I got it at a garage sale. These are the Brain Quest and it comes with two and it's just like little questions. Sorry, I keep sh putting it right in the light. They're just questions, like I'll read you one. Um, they're not just math, but they do have quite a bit of math, um, questions. So it's like, it's two hours before noon. What time is it? You know, and you can just have these by your sink or wherever you are every day. And you can ask those questions. Um, and they think those are kind of fun. In fact, I might pull those out again this summer just to, I don't know, do something different. Uh, they like kind of figuring out little puzzles and things like that. The other very obvious way that probably most of you have done or will are doing or will do at some point are flashcards. So I have some, I have all of a multiplication, addition, subtraction, and we haven't hit division yet. But I will say Saxon Math has some addition cards and they kind of have grouped them by color in families. So, whoops. So like the nine family, nine plus whatever, are all yellow. And if you do have a child who is kind of struggling with the math facts, really great way to um, kind of cement that in their mind. And um, like, the yeah, the one plus what the plus ones are this kind of tan skin color, whatever, peach. And then the, let's see, eights and looks like some other ones are also like bright pink. So it's really a great way to help your child learn, um, you know, especially if you have a math program that kind of teaches them that way. I think most of them do anymore by families and, you know, just like doubles, doubles plus one, doubles plus two, that kind of thing. I think it really helps. And I know it did help my son. We used those um, during the year this last year and that was really, really helpful. Okay, the next thing is, if you have a math book, you know, if you homeschool or if you, even if you don't homeschool, if you have some math concepts that you know your child learned over the year that you kind of want to review, I'm sure you could just Google like third grade math facts or third grade, you know, math or whatever and just saw what they learned. But we use Saxon and we're doing the Saxon Intermediate 3. And what it has in it, where is it? They're called Investigations. And so like today our investigation was geometric shapes. So it's, it even gave you ideas like look around your house and try and find all of these geometric shapes in your house. And it was wonderful and really fun and my son loved it. And so I was um, thinking what I would do is go back through this, those investigations and just write 
simply write it down like geometric shapes, symmetry, whatever it was that we went over. And then when we go to the zoo or whatever, I'll just glance at that piece of paper. Or honestly, once you write it down, you kind of have it in your mind. Um, and then when you go to the zoo, you can look at the butterflies and be like, hey, look at the symmetry of this butterfly or whatever. I mean, it's so easy and so simple, but just that repetition really helps them learn. And um, yes, I'm finding as my older son is getting older, I see areas where I was like, oh, he'll be fine. He knows that. And so I kind of quit talking about it. And now I'm like, ah, you know, especially for math facts. I'm like, oh, he's got them. And then I'm like, no, no, he doesn't. And so... I'm changing things with my younger two because I realize you constantly need to talk about these things that they're learning because they, it, yeah, it'll just, it'll be beneficial to everyone. Let's just put it that way. Another thing we've done over the summer, we did this a couple summers ago, is this Mind Benders book. And it's really fun because it's unlike their math book. It really has something completely different. And this is just like they give you three um, statements or three sentences and you have to figure out like who drives the, who, or who's taking the airplane and who's taking the boat and who's taking the car or whatever. So it's really fun. This was a great one. Um, I think it's for grades, yeah, it's grades one through two. And it's a fun one to get. You could get one for each of your kids and their grades or whatever. And that was a an extremely, like, took just a couple seconds to do each day. But it was very, very fun and very, very different from the norm of, like, their math during the year. So I liked that because it kind of just seemed to use a little different part of their brain. Um, I think that was all the math tips I had. Yeah. Um, I will link my Pinterest page down below because I have pinned tons of math games. We do simple ones. Like we will take our um, whiteboard and I just write like three plus two, three plus three, three plus one for, you know, my kindergartner if I'm just reviewing some math facts. And I just write it on there and he has the eraser and I'll say six and he has to erase the three plus three or whatever. Or I'll do it opposite. I'll write the number numbers one through ten and I'll say five plus five and he has to erase the ten. He loves that. It's a really fun way to do it, really short and easy. Or I write the numbers on there and one day I got out the fly swatter and washed it, just FYI, because don't want anybody thinking we're smashing bug guts all over um and he would whack it whatever whatever number I was or whatever um yeah addition problem I gave him he would whack the answer and smack it and he loved that that was really fun so just kind of doing fun things like that and making it a part of your routine like right after breakfast or right before breakfast or whatever like you know you can do it during the day I think that's really fun um I hope these tips have helped you and I hope you guys have a great day I'll talk to you later